So it's Sunday afternoon and I am at a friend's house. This is actually one of my former uh, hockey players. Um, I coached his team with my son a few years ago and um, he called me, got, is this your first Jeep? This is your first yeah, vehicle. First so vehicle. he's a young, what are you, 18? Yep. So he's got this Jeep. He just bought it yesterday, drove it here, actually drove it around for a while, no problem. Shut it off in his driveway and it won't restart. So what we're doing today is a no crank diagnosis on a 2000 Jeep Wrangler, I believe. And it's yep. a, it's a four liter engine. And uh, what I want to show you guys is the, the process that we're going to go through um, that you can apply to every single vehicle, um, especially when it comes to the young guys who, who haven't really had experience with a car yet. So um, we'll, we'll try to keep this uh, as universal as possible. If things get a little high tech, um, you know, so be it. Um, I will be using a wiring diagram. Uh, that I have a professional version that I use, but you guys can can do a DIY version of what I'm showing, and I'll put that uh, link in the description of this video where you guys can find diagrams. Uh, so, Greg, if you were working by yourself, you can get a diagram for your vehicle for like 10 bucks for like three days. The version I'm using costs about $200 a month, so big difference in in uh, cost there. But this will work for the DIY person. So again, a no crank diagnosis, starting with some basic voltage measurements. Let's go to the car and do it. Okay, forgive the audio difference here. I'm using a different camera. Uh, the first check that you guys can do, this is universal, applies to any car. This is if you're stuck somewhere, you're trying to get direction. When a vehicle doesn't crank is turn the headlights on. Go ahead and do that for me, Greg. And let me just talk about this for a second before we continue. Um, some cars, it's normal for the headlights to shut off during a crank. So then what you could do is pick a dome light or we could actually use the parking lights as a guide. But what we're looking for is do the lights change or dim when we crank it? That gives us good direction. So go ahead and hit that in the crank position. So we saw no change whatsoever. The lights are pretty bright. Um, it's an older style of light, so they're, they're a little bit more yellow than maybe today's. But what that tells us is this is not a battery problem and doing a jump start and calling someone to jump your car is not going to help you. That's the first check. So the light stay bright, says no current flow is getting to the starter motor and a jump start is not going to help. Um, one of the things that I would do at this point without having any other tools with me is I would go underneath the vehicle and smack on the start. Especially, Greg, if you're in the middle of the woods somewhere and the vehicle's not starting, you don't have anything with you, uh, it's an old school method. Um, I only hesitate to do that because if I do it and the vehicle starts, we're done. You need a starter, end of video, right? Um, I think for my subscribers, um, I would like to check the powers on the starter next with my test light. But again, uh, for you guys that maybe don't have that beating on the starter, uh, would be the next step if you're stuck in the woods. We'll probably show that method too, but for us, going after the test light next at the starter, we want to see if we're missing uh, power feeds down to it. All right, guys, we're on the passenger side of the vehicle. Just below the oil filter to the left is our starter motor, and the two wires that I'm going to be checking, one is on that heavy stud right there that you're looking at, that'd be the top left. That's our main battery cable. That one's hot all the time. And then just uh, in the center of the screen now with the red clip and hard to see the wire color there coming into that, that is the starter control wire. That's the one that comes from the ignition switch. So I'm just gonna take a test light and check those two circuits. The important part when we check these is we do it with it cranking for both tests. And before I forget to talk about it, um, off camera, Greg's dad told me that they did the um, smack on the starter test when I was not here. Where you'd want to typically hit on the starter is, is on the solenoid itself, but honestly, wherever you can um, in some circumstances would be fine. And he had mentioned that they didn't um, hit on it very hard, which I told him was good, and the reason why you don't want to smack on these hard, especially today's starters, as they're using permanent magnets inside of the housing as um, the field magnet. And what can happen if you smack on them too hard is you ruin the starter. So what would happen if 
the starter is not bad and you continue to beat on it, you're going to have to put a starter in it when you're done. And so it's a good thing that, uh, that you didn't hit it hard. Um, so good job there. And uh, good to know though that that was already done and it looks like our wiring techs are definitely in order here uh, regardless. Okay guys, what I've done off camera is I've connected a, uh, a little piercing tool for the uh, smaller gauge wire. That's this circuit right here. So my finger on that, Greg, you can see that. So I've poked a small hole in, in this wire. That's my starter control wire. That's the one that will be hot when we crank it. And of course I'll fix the little hole when I'm done. I have some liquid electrical tape that will plug that up, make sure the wire doesn't corrode. And then our heavy gauge wire, can you see that stud right there, Greg? Mm -hmm. That's my heavy gauge wire. That one's hot all the time. So all I'm going to do is connect the test light to ground. I'm just using the bell housing. So this first test, um, I have Greg holding my camera now, is um, hot all the time, but this is not a good test. You have to be in the crank position when you do this test because the wire itself could be corroded and has enough energy to light my test light, but once you crank it over, uh, it creates a basically an open circuit and that light will go out. So go ahead and crank that for me. Let me know when you're in the crank position. You're there. Okay, so you see the light staying bright. That means our positive battery cable, the heavy gauge circuit is fine. All right, let off. Okay, the next one is the smaller gauge wire. I'm going to my tool. Can you see my connection there, Greg? Mm-hmm. Okay, and go ahead and, and uh, turn it to the crank position. And let off and crank it again. Notice the light is lighting. Okay, can you see that, Greg? That means everything inside, that part that you guys bought for the ignition switch, the circuit, you don't need it. We have power here, we have power in both locations where we need it. One last test since we're staying with the test light would be the starter housing itself. Can you see where I'm connected, right? Right there on the housing? Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm just going to the housing. We're checking the ground on the starter and this is done again with a loaded circuit. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, and that's it. If that ground was bad, that light would have lit. Um, this circuit is fine. Actually, I'm connected to the block here. Let me do one, one last check. Um, you stay focused where you are, Greg. This last check, you still see the connections at the starter. Mm -hmm. To check this ground, you can't be on the block. I was on the bell housing. I'm now connected to the battery, and I have seen bad block grounds. What I'll do for you guys is put some video uh, links in the description of this video to show you guys what a bad block ground looks like. And what this last test really is that I'm about to show you, um, I, I connected to the battery negative now, and we're going to compare battery negative to the housing of the starter, which is again right there. Can you see where my test light's connected? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, go ahead and crank that for me again, please. All right, if we would add a bad ground, that light would have lit. We do not have a bad ground, Greg, you need a starter motor. At this point, being that wiring is good, confirms, I don't mind being a little bit more aggressive with the hammer and beating on it, and that's what we're gonna do. Um, so, you, um, the last part for this would be a little bit different maybe than way, the way you guys did it. What I found to be more effective is have someone holding it in the crank position while you're smacking on it. I don't know if you guys did it that way or not, so go ahead and do that. You hold in the crank position, I'm gonna smack on the motor. So for this test, I wanna be clear, safety is very important, and uh, this is an automatic transmission. We are in park, and uh, you know we're, we're not in any danger of getting run over while Greg and I are under here. <laughs> um, so the part that we wanna smack on first will be the starter solenoid, which is up here. So I'm gonna smack on that, and then we'll try on the motor itself. It really doesn't matter, I mean, you just want to hit on it, and when you want to do it while someone's cranking. So, uh, Rich, go ahead and hold that in the crank position. I'm going to smack on the motor. I'm 
Nothing. Well, does not change the call. Good feed, good control, good ground, bad starter motor. Okay, there's, there's one last thing, guys, as I'm promising you this needs a starter motor. When I did my check on the heavy wire, I went to the bolt, um, or I went, I don't know if I, did I go to the threads? I don't remember if I did or not. Where you want to check this, can you see my finger too? Mm -hmm. Where you want to check this is on the stud, because if you go on the eyelet, which is down here, um, you could have good wiring to there, but I've seen many times that this contact is bad between the eyelet and the stud itself. So the correct test is on the stud, and we want to do this again with it cranking. So go ahead and crank that one more time. We want to make sure that light stays lit, and it does, so we're good. I didn't uh, miss that, but it is possible that you can misdiagnose a starter if you measure it at the eyelet instead of the stud because of a contact problem. So again, 100% at this point, we need a starter. Okay guys, um, I want to show I want to show you one more thing and Greg I want you over here too so you can see um, what I'm doing and, and how the starter actually works. So um, what we'll do first is well I'll show you that I'll show you the new one because the old one does not work and then I'll show you that. Um, so the way that the starter functions is um, this particular post, this is the one that's hot all the time. That's the, the heavy wire that we tested. Um, and the solenoid wire, which is this one, when uh, you energize this with the ignition switch, it energizes the coil, pulls a disc in, which connects this one and this one, and makes the motor spin, and at the same time kicks the Bendix out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little jump pack here, and I'm going to show you that. So we'll give this a power on the stud. We will... Give this housing a ground, okay? Because it's grounded on your block. And then from there, this will probably scare me the first time because it'll jump on me. I'm gonna go with a jumper wire to the small pin. That's the one that I just connected that jumper wire to would be from your ignition switch. And then when you touch on this, it should kick the starter. So watch it again. You'll see the Bendix. You see this piece come out. Okay. You see that piece coming out too? Yeah. Um, there's another way that you can test it too, which would be the motor itself. If I connect directly to this, it, it'll just... don't want to do that. It kind of scared me there. It was a little bit too much amperage. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to hurt this new starter. Um, but the reason that, that that arcs so much is in this case, I'm letting the disc make the contact and the heavy current flow go this way, where when I connect directly to that, that's directly to the motor. And you're talking 100 some amps, even unloaded, and that's why it arced a lot. I'll show that to you on the bad one, and, uh, and then we'll just wrap this up, put this in the car. All right, so the test your dad and I did while you were gone and getting the starter was the same thing. We ground, ground one side and then go to here, go to the, the post or the small gauge control wire. This is the one from your ignition switch. Touch it on here. And I can feel a little bit of the magnetic field um, moving, but that solenoid's not working like it should either. All right, so that didn't work. And then what I did, went directly to the motor. You see we have current, but no movement of the motor. So it's more than a solenoid issue. This one has a motor issue. I'm glad we didn't take this apart. We do have some kind of continuity there or some type of current flow, but this thing's probably all jammed up inside. Let's get this good one in the car and then I'll get you guys a shot of here in the engine crank. All right, this is after installing the new starter. Go ahead and try it, Greg. See if we have a happy kid. <laughs>
Okay, cool. So that was pretty standard procedures, guys, on diagnosing a faulty starter. Make sure that you're checking your main feed and your control with the uh, key in the crank position. Make sure you're checking your block ground. And again, for those of you that need more help with this, I'll put in the description of this video some other videos I've done on checking block grounds and other bad starter uh, cranking type videos. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you next time.